you gonna chew my cords? Are you gonna chew all my cords? You can say no. Welcome! So this is the question and answer video. So you guys were fantastic. You left me a bunch of really fun and some really silly questions and I'm going to answer them. And then halfway through I will reveal who the winner of the bow tie contest was. So a couple of the questions were repeats. So you guys asked the same thing. So I'm, I kind of consolidated a few of them, but hopefully I will answer enough questions that you guys feel like you got to know me a little bit better. So let's start off. It's garbage day, so sorry if you hear the garbage trucks, they just keep coming by. I keep waiting for them to like go before I, before I film and it's endless. There's so much garbage in this world. Hashtag 2020. All right, so I've got your questions here. So I'm gonna read them off. Um, the first question is, do your cats have a nickname? So their official names are Big Face and Small Face, which you may have seen if you saw the cat bow tie video. Um, we call them a lot of things. They actually do have like real names. Their real names are Trillian and Murray, but we never, we never freaking call them by their real names. It's like we sort of forget and then anytime they have to go to the vet, which luckily is not too often, they're just like, so which cat is it? Is it Trillian or Mur Murray? And we're just like, oh shit. Which cat did we name which one? Oh. <laughs> we mostly call them the boy and the girl because we're very boring. But they also have monikers of the prince and the princess, but they're not what you would expect. The boy is the princess and the girl is the sweet prince. Um, and that's more reflective of their personalities than their assigned sexes. So they're, they're good cats. We call them all sorts of things, including, including some that maybe shouldn't be on this video. <laughs> Another cat related question is how old are your cats? And this was asked by Tila Kamu. Tila Kamu. I'm going to get all of your usernames wrong. Just like putting that out there. I'm not going to do a good job. Um, so our cats are the same age, they're litter mates, and they are just over one year. So they're young cats, but not like kitten cats anymore. And then another sort of cat related question, um, ish, is uh, do you make historical pet costumes? Uh, this was asked by James David, and tragically no, I do not make historical pet costumes. Uh, maybe in another life, because that sounds cute as hell, and if someone does, someone should let me know. <laughs> so I can buy one or two. <laughs> oh, my cats would hate me. <sighs> Noodle Ghoul asked, if you were any mythical creature, what creature would you be? And I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not sure. When I was like younger, like high school, say, I used to always envision myself to be a Gorgon. And I think that's probably because I felt very misunderstood and wanted to, um, destroy all men, which is not really how I feel anymore. I feel like there are some great dudes out there. Um, but I really did want the ability to turn people into stone just by looking at them. <laughs> I don't know how reflective that is of my current personality. Oh, there's so many good mythical creatures out there. I'm going to still say Gorgon because I would really like to have snakes for hair. You know, like the, the turning people to stone thing, that's cool, but like snakes for hair? Chef's kiss. Pins.needles asked, what is your dream project? And there were a couple kind of questions along these lines, so I just sort of combined them into that one. Um, so sorry if you also asked that question. I also see you. I don't, I don't know. I didn't really get into sewing because I had like a particular dream project I wanted to build towards. Um, so I haven't really put a lot of thought into this. I feel like every project I do is like the thing I want to be doing at that moment in time. Um, I do have a couple big projects I'm looking forward to and like the Slytherin costume is like basically a dream project. Uh, so I guess no, but also yes. I think probably the answer is no though. Like I don't have like a worth gown that I'm like aiming towards, which is I think a thing that a lot of people do have in their like 
the little soul of happiness is they have something really big that they're building towards and I don't really have that. I just have projects that make me happy and I do them. <laughs> I'm a simple person. <laughs> Another question uh, asked by Tila Kamu is, did you have a formal education in sewing or are you self-taught? Um, I'm completely self-taught. I don't really know what I'm doing in many, many regards. I am still a super beginner. Um, I'm just stubborn. I'm just stubborn as hell and uh, willing to ask questions and look on YouTube for other people's experiences and kind of figure it out as I go along. I'm also, I'm also fine with like mediocre results. Like I don't want mediocre results, but like I, I'm fine with it sometimes. Sometimes you just need to do a project the best you can and move on. Sometimes it's not going to turn out to be perfect. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm self-taught, but like I grew up around a small amount of sewing, so it's not like I came into it from nowhere. I had like the basic traditional um, socialized female experience, right, where you make like pillows and whatever they called it. It wasn't called home ec anymore in middle school. Whatever they called it, you know. I made a pillowcase, I made a pillow with my grandma, and actually just like I think three-ish years ago my mom and I sat down and sewed a, a dress together um four years ago three years ago four years ago it was in the past <laughs> and uh it was kind of a, a bad pattern and the fabric we chose was very pretty but was not an appropriate choice for the garment in terms of like the weight um so it didn't turn out that great because of like my mom and stuff i i did know how to like i learned how to read patterns and I did learn how I did learn my way around a sewing machine, um, so I never like was experienced in it. But I wasn't I wasn't as afraid of it as I could have been. And I think that's a big part of it, right? Like there's a lot of lingo that you have to learn when you're reading patterns, and there's a lot of maybe genuine terrifiedness when it comes to like operating a sewing machine. Like, am I gonna break a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollar machine, or am I gonna like sew my finger off? <laughs> the answer is probably neither. My cat's doing something and I don't know what. You're okay, buddy. You're fine. But like, did I have like a fashion degree? Definitely not. I'm... I'm winging it. I'm winging it, y'all. KD Social asks, What is your favorite make ever? Oh. The bicycle trousers are my favorite. Like, they, they turned out the best, they fit the best. I had like the easiest time working with the pattern. I was very chuffed with them. <laughs> to borrow a British phrase, I was extremely chuffed. Extraterrestrial asks, what is your favorite part of the sewing process? Um, I know people like Bernadette Banner love felling and finishing things and I'll do it, right? Because I want the thing to be able to be worn. But my favorite part is actually just like thinking up thinking about the thing itself and like coming up with the fabric and coming up with the design if it's not already made or like how am I going to change the design or how am I going to make it fit my body and not like a generic body um and like the blue sky sort of design process and playing with ideas process is totally my favorite um plus there's like no stakes right <laughs> You can think of all these things and you don't have to purchase the fabric, you don't have to cut the fabric, you don't have to like stare down your own abilities and determine if it's something you can actually do or what you need to learn first if you can't. But that is also simultaneously the least rewarding because you you can't wear that. It's a Photoshop sketch. <laughs> so um, I do the rest of the sewing because I do enjoy the process of sewing but also because then I get to actually wear it. Who's Betty Yubi? Again, I'm gonna say all your usernames wrong, I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, asks, what is your favorite material to sew? I really, really liked sewing with linen when I did those trousers, um, but I also really, really liked sewing with wool when I did those other trousers. I'm gonna say wool because it has more options available to it in terms of weight and fineness. Linen is, is you can have different weights of linen, but it is sort of 
a smaller family of materials than wool. So I'm gonna say wool is my favorite, I've decided. And then this question I got several times by different people, so I'm not going to give it a particular attribution. Um, but the question is, how many hats can fit on your head? <laughs> One. So I had several people comment that they were disappointed that there wasn't a fourth hat in residence on my head. So this is for you. Um, the answer is four, because I only have four hats. That's the number that can fit on my head. And will they look good? No. No, they will not. But they are here. They are here for you. Maybe the answer is three. But now, a break. Because... There was a winner for the bow tie contest! So 49 of you entered, which I thought was just so charming. Thank you guys so much for your interest. Um, it is extremely delightful and I'm, I'm so excited that so many of you want a tiny bow tie for your pet or yourself. One of you did say yourself and I thought that was delightful. Um, but the person who won was... drumroll please. Jacoris88, or Jaco Hours 88 or whatever your username's actual pronunciation is. <laughs> you won! Congratulations! I'm going to be making you a bow tie for your cat, Lucky. Who, according to your comment, also has an El Elizabethan ruff, but not like the cat cone of shame, but like an actual ruff. So your, your cat's accessory game is like, on point, A+. I'm excited to add to it a little bit here. So thank you so much everybody for for playing the game and joining in the the raffle here. It was really fun to see your comments roll in and learn a little bit about all your pets too. <laughs> all right, back to the Q and A. All right, both Amanda Potter and Mike Hawk Fishes asked, "What are your favorite eras to draw upon for inspiration?" Um. I actually really, really like the Edwardian era in terms of the design. I feel like the fabrics are more on display, like it's less flounces than certain Victorian stuff were, and um, I just really think it's beautiful. I don't love the silhouettes um, because, I don't know, I tend to think about things how I can apply them to my own body and the Edwardian and Victorian and basically any corseted silhouette isn't something I have any desire in replicating on myself. <laughs> I'm finally out of binders and I'm really enjoying not having to have anything compressive on me and I know that a lot of people find corsets empowering and comfortable. It's so fluffy. And yeah, for me personally, I have no interest in wearing a corset or sort of enhancing that that figure that's something I'm actually <laughs> trying to avoid is that figure um, so the the silhouettes don't interest me but the fabric does the the pleats the little pin tucks the beautiful floral and art deco designs I think it's all just freaking gorgeous Tila Camus is asking the really important questions lately uh, this one is what is your favorite smell <laughs> <laughs> I did not prepare these. I did. I didn't. I wrote them down, um, but I did not prepare answers ahead of time. Seriously? Don't do that. I love you. It's not a toy. I love you. I will. I will kick you out. Yep. You gotta go. I love you. Bye. Light is so cool. I'm sorry, but like that reflection that gets put in just by the fact that I'm holding light-colored paper is just like. That's so silly! That's so silly that light does that! I mean, it's, it's like cliche, right? But like, fresh bread. Like, fresh out of the oven bread. In winter, when your house is dry and everything is a little bit stale smelling because you can't open the frickin' windows or the doors because it's like below outside. The smell of like fresh steaming bread. Like, just slowly hydrating your soul and the air around you. That's my favorite. Uh, the first thing you ever sewed, asked by M. -sk -sk. It's E M S K. Uh, M. -sk. Asked by M. -sk. The first thing you ever sewed. 
Oh, I think I still have it. Yes, it's dusty. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, that must have been in middle school or maybe high school, maybe. Um, oh God, it's so dusty. It's covered in cat hair. Oh, the cats have been using it. Uh, a big pillow. Um, and the thing that was so exciting, I think she did all the work on this, was we sewed in, if you can see it here, piping. <laughs> I, I think I must have chosen the fabric and I, uh, what can I say? I liked loud. I was a loud, opinionated human and I still am. Jay Kors, Jacors? Jacors88 asks, what's the most rewarding project you've made? I'm just the bicycle trousers again because they worked. Um, and it wasn't anything I did, right? It was just that the pattern didn't suck. <laughs> and that was rewarding in and of itself. Honestly though, the most rewarding project is one I haven't shown you yet because it's very much still a work in progress. I'm working on a frock coat, um, although it technically has tails, not a skirt, so I think it's like an evening jacket. Um, it's called a frock coat on the pattern, but I did a full mock-up of it so far and I did my first welt pocket when I was doing it and that was extremely rewarding because it worked a charm. Like, it worked out perfectly. I did two welt pockets, they fairly matched, they looked good. Um, I need to completely re-sew the mock-up anyway because my size has changed, <laughs> but it was a rewarding mock-up. I don't know, sometimes, sometimes what's rewarding is not the finished product but the things you've learned and that was a, a big ego booster for me. Joris van der Aa asks, how old were you when you first started sewing historically inspired clothing? So uh, this is either gonna make you uh, happy or, or mad or sad, um, but I was this year's old. <laughs> um, like I said, I actually don't have that much sewing experience. Um, I'm having a lot of fun and I really like sharing the process, but I am not an expert like at all. Uh, there are some really great people out there to follow for that, and I suggest you listen to them more than me. Um, a lot of times I parrot the information that they've already shared, and I try really hard to source that. Um, so far the biggest one has been Vincent Briggs. He's fabulous, go check him out. Um, but I was today years old, which means I'm 32. Oh wait, I guess technically I was 31 when I started. So there you go. Uh, Brissy Girl asks, what drew you to historically inspired clothing? I think it was as simple as watching a Bernadette Banner video. And like, that's cliched, right? Like, but I think it was, I think it was watching a Bernadette Banner video and then her saying something about only starting to sew four years ago, or so historically inspired things four years ago, and me being like, oh shit, I could maybe do that. And it was that coupled with like a really intense frustration with clothing and my own body and like feeling really disserved by the fashion industry and my own wardrobe that made me be like, well, screw it. Modern clothing does nothing for me. It is not helpful. It is making me actively unhappy. So like, screw it. We're gonna make our own clothes and we're gonna make them to fit who I am, both in body and spirit. Bernadette Banner opened the door, but the desire to walk through it was more intrinsically motivated. Shannon Flaherty asks, do you have a formative youth experience and seeing costume from TV or movies or et cetera that you still think of? Um, yes. So this is like weirdly specific, but when I was a kid, it's still currently, I love Star Wars. I love Star Wars. And episode one, which I know like is like a thing, right? People hate that movie. I love that movie. And it's partially because I saw it at a very formative age before I knew what good and bad and trashy was. But like Padme Amidala's costumes do something for me. And they always have. And I know that there's some problems in terms of appropriative behavior and design. I'm, I'm well aware, I don't, I don't want to absolve any of that at all, but the way that the costuming paid so much attention to her wardrobe and her hair and her costume and the ceremonial aspect of, of her dress, 
It was magical to me, and it really made me pay attention to costumes for the first time. Basically, I wanted to be a Jedi when I was a kid, okay? And I was always really annoyed that my brother got a Jedi Halloween costume and I didn't. So if we're gonna track it back to that, it's that I still want to be a Jedi and someday I'm gonna make myself a Jedi outfit. <laughs> so there. <laughs> and then Dixie DIY asks, what skill or technique have you found most useful? It's not really like a, a skill or technique in the traditional sense, but I would say um, perseverance is the most useful thing you can have. And that's been the most useful for me. And it's not like that's like, oh, I know how to sew perseverance. Um, it's that like if you run into a problem, knowing when to ask for help, knowing when to just barrel forward because it will probably be okay. And um, not giving up when it gets hard. But like you can take a break from something. Otherwise, in terms of like actual skill or technique, careful reading. A pattern can be amazing and a, and a pattern can be absolutely dumb. But like, either way, you gotta read that thing closely. All right, that's the end of my list. That is all of your questions. Well, most of your questions. Silly and smart answered. So I hope you found that interesting. I don't think it would be considered educational, but you never know. Um, I had I had a fun time answering your questions, so thank you so much for putting them forth and letting me noodle around and chat at you. I have some new projects coming up, so next week stay tuned for another video. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so, it helps me out. I'm nowhere near the monetization level for YouTube yet, so right now I'm not getting paid for these at all. And if you want to help me sort of angle towards that, um, keep watching and hit the subscribe button. It, every bit helps me, so thank you. Until next time, be queer and make stuff. Bye.